Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is a ton of news stories to get into today. So we're going to start off talking about WWE and of course NXT 2.0, the revamp episode was this past Tuesday night on the USA Network and as expected I think in fairness as expected the ratings increased the viewership increased and I think WWE and the folks that run NXT but particularly the big movers and shakers your Vince McMahon your Nick Khan your Bruce Pritchards they'll be happy with the ratings and viewership numbers for NXT 2.0 on uh, Tuesday night on the USA Network because Tuesday's live revamp edition of WWE NXT 2.0 drew 770 20,000 viewers on the USA Network. This is according to Showbuzz Daily uh, via Nielsen. Now, this is up over 28% from last week's taped episode, which drew 601,000 viewers on the USA Network. Tuesday's NXT 2.0 episode drew a 0.21 rating in the key 1849 demographic. This is up 50%, 50, 50, 50% 50 from last week's 0.14 rating in the key demographic. This week's uh, 0.20 rating represents 275,000 viewers in the 1849 demographic. This is up over 48% from the 185,000 viewers for last week's 0.14 key demo rating. Now, NXT ranked 10 in the cable top 150 this week with a 0.21 rating in the, in the 1849 demographic, as I mentioned. Uh, this is up from last week's number 31 ranking. NXT ranked 45 in viewership on cable this week, up from last week's 62. Now, this week's NXT episode drew the best viewership since the April 20 episode, which drew 841,000 viewers, and the best key demographic rating since the 0.22 rating that the April 27 episode drew. Now, the NXT 2.0 episode drew the third best audience of the year, which was tied with two other episodes for the fifth uh, best key demo rating of the year. The viewership, as I mentioned, was up over 20% from last week, while the key demo rating was up over 50% from last week. This week's NXT viewership was also up over 11% from the episode that aired one year ago today, while the key demographic was up over 16% from the show that, episode that aired one year ago to, uh, today. Of course, that rating uh, and that viewership, that episode was head-to-head on Dynamite on Wednesday night. So, look, they'll be very happy with that. They'll be very, very happy with that. WWE will be happy with that. Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard and Nick Khan will be going, see, see, we were right. We were right to do the revamp. See, it's, it's all good. It's all good. In reality, it will be about how can they can they stick this? Can they can they keep this up? Again, it was the best viewership since since April, and of course that was around the time when you had the first going into the Tuesday night time slot. And you recall back then, when they moved to Tuesday nights, there was this sort of sense of optimism, wasn't there, about NXT then, that because there was no competition from AEW, we were really going to see NXT start to thrive again, and it just got worse. It just got worse, and it was just, it was just a show that was kind of like a shrug, like okay, you know, it's you've got your you've got your good matches and your good characters on there, but by that point, I think people were so tuned out, not necessarily because of NXT, the brand itself, and the, and the product. The product was fine. The reason people were so tuned out is because what they were seeing happen to some of their favorite stars once they left the brand and everyone was just a bit tired. Everyone was just a bit tired. And look, I'll give them credit. I did it in the in the WWE news video that we did yesterday here on the channel. I'll give them credit that I think the look of NXT in terms of the arena that they have at the Performance Center is far, far, far better, far better to what they had before. I'm still massively keen on that new NXT logo, but I think the overall presentation was good. I think that the the, the general consensus on social media, isn't it, that Bron Breaker, whilst the name is awful, absolutely awful, and I think eventually it will be changed because the name sucks, I do think that the 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 presentation of Bron Breaker and the look of him absolutely screams like a guy that could be a major major star for WWE and there were lots of new names and that that general philosophy of going back to what they had in the mid 2000s we want bigger guys less established guys guys that look like a superstar we want that sort of wow factor when we see them that's the direction that they're going in and it has served them well in the past I guess and this is a new era for NXT it's completely different to the NXT that we've grown to no, and some people love, but maybe it was the right time for a change. Again, when, whenever you have debut episodes or revamp episodes, you can talk about successes of, of viewership and ratings, and that's fine. But it's that continued, it's that continued 
success. And it's that continued, consistent uh, viewership uh, ratings rise that I think WWE would want to see. But of course, they'll be very happy with that. They'll be very happy with that. And again, for me, the big indicator will be, okay, next week. Next week, if it's still closer to that 800,000 mark, then obviously they are doing something right. And there is room to grow there, certainly. If it's going back down to your your, your 600s or your, even your 500s, then it's a case of, well, it's you've glittered a turd. It's still a piece of crap, though. So we'll have to wait and see when it comes to that. But they'll be very happy. They'll be very happy with that. Speaking of NXT as well, we have an update when it comes to Candice LeRae. Now, of course, a lot of people are talking about Johnny Gargano and his expiring contract later this year. Whilst his wife, Candice LeRae, uh, her NXT contract reportedly expires sometime in 2022. It was reported on September 13 how Candice's husband, Johnny Gargano, will see his WWE contract expire on Friday, December 3rd. It was noted that as of September September 13, Gargano and WWE had not entered into new contract negotiations, but WWE was expected to begin them later on this year in the fall. In an update, Candice LeRae's contract does not match up with Gargano's deal. Not that it ever was going to. Gargano was easily established on NXT before uh, Candice LeRae ever signed a contract with WWE. I mean, she made her debut, what, in that match against Tommaso Ciampa, right? So (laughs) it was never going to line up. Those people that thought that was going to be the case, I think it's just, you know, massively wrong, massively wrong. Um, She still has a lot of time left on her contract after him, according to, again, Fightful Select, who's the one that broke the original Gargano story. Now, it was noted that LeRae's contract expires sometime in 2022. The exact date was not confirmed, but that should be available rather soon. LeRae announced back on August 12 that she and Gargano are expecting their first child together. She's due to give birth on February 2022. The new report says WWE is not, quote, freezing LeRae's contract during her pregnancy as she remains an on-screen character. Now, Lorraine mentioned in her pregnancy announcement that she planned to stay on NXT television for as long as she was allowed to, even if she can't get physical. This new report notes how NXT sources are saying that Lorraine insisted she remained an on-screen character as long as she possibly could, and that NXT officials have been happy with her performance both in and out of the ring during this period of time. Of course, Lorraine was involved when it comes to the whole index wedding. She was involved on Tuesday night as well. And again, I think that it's going to be a case of her just remaining a presence on television for as long as possible. I still say when it comes to the Johnny Gargano stuff, and and my opinion hasn't really changed on that, is I would be really, really surprised, to be honest with you, if he did leave WWE. I obviously could see him fitting in in AEW because he's a smaller guy from an indie background. He doesn't really fit what WWE are are planning on doing, certainly with NXT going forward. So you would think, oh, maybe he's going to be in a bit of trouble there. In reality, he's an established name, especially for that brand. Johnny Gargano is NXT, especially now that Adam Cole isn't there. Johnny Gargano is NXT. So I would be really surprised to see him leave because, again, whilst he could be a success in AEW, it's arguable. It's arguable. Like when you have Adam Cole on the roster, you would say he would probably, whilst he's having great success in NXT, it's debatable whether he would have that success on the main roster, whereas you know he's going to have great success in AEW. There's no doubt in my mind that Adam Cole eventually one day will be AEW World Champion. I can't say the same thing about that with him on the main roster. Was he ever going to be WWE Heavyweight Champion or Universal Champion? I mean, you never say never, but the chances were already stacked against him. Johnny Gargano doesn't look like he's going to go to the main roster. He's NXT for life. Whereas, you know, and he could be the NXT champion once again one day, right? We've already heard those discussions of he's going to be the next, or he's going to be the top heel in the NXT brand going forward. That's a possibility. Now, when he goes to AEW, is he going to have that same level of of success? I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Again, he's part of the furniture there. He's established. So I would be really surprised that anything can happen. It's 2021. Over the last 18 months, we found out that literally anything can and will happen in the world of pro wrestling. But... To be honest with you, I just I, I would be really, really, really surprised if Johnny Gargano did indeed leave uh, WWE and decided to go to, well, I mean, who's to say it would be AEW, but he could go to Impact or he could go to New Japan or he could go wherever. I just see that this, this new version of NXT, whilst it might not mesh with Johnny Gargano in terms of the size, the stature, the background, etc., they have to keep some of the experienced heads around and the people that are widely associated with NXT, especially in this transitional phase when you're moving from the old version of NXT to the new version. So I don't I don't suspect that Johnny Gargano will go anywhere anytime soon, unless, of course, AEW gives him an offer that he can't refuse. But 
to be honest with you, I don't really see that happening. Uh, some more updates when it comes to Big E. Of course, Big E, new WWE champion, won the WWE Championship this past Monday night on Raw. Now, in an update, new WWE champion Big E is officially a member of the Monday Night Raw roster. It was believed that Big E would move to the red brand after successfully cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase on Bobby Lashley this past Monday. But WWE has now moved him to the Raw roster on their website, which means it's website official, as if it was in any way, as if the draft or the brand split means anything we're acting like this a hard and fast kind of thing now it's always always possible of course that Big E and Universal Champion Roman Reigns could switch brands in the 2021 WWE draft that takes place next month very unlikely in my opinion very unlikely Roman Reigns is Smackdown Fox would throw the biggest hissy fit in the world and WWE does enough to piss them off anyway so they don't want to do that so nothing has been reported on that direction I think it's likely Big E stays on Raw and Reigns stays on Smackdown now, as noted, the draft will begin with the SmackDown from Baltimore on October 1st and then wrap up with Monday Night Raw from Nashville on October 4th. Now, it was reported earlier this week via um, the uh, Matt Men podcast by Andrew Zarian that Big E's WWE Championship victory was supposed to take place during the original WWE draft date for Monday Night Raw. Zarian, though, has since clarified, noting that the plan has always been for Big E to be on Monday Night Raw. The draft was originally scheduled to happen earlier this month, but it was moved. WWE officials kept the plan for Big E to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase to win the WWE Championship. Now, Big E spoke with Bleach Report Graham Matthews this past week and indicated he wasn't 100% clear on his roster status, but he was assuming that he was now on Raw. He said, quote, that is a great question. My assumption is that I'm now a Raw guy until I hear differently. That's my assumption. I really loved my time on Blue. I think I was on SmackDown for the last four years. I'm really appreciative. I love that show and such an incredible roster. But now it looks like my time is here on Raw and I'm excited to do all the things with Kofi and Woods. There's a whole different avenue of guys I can mix it up with now. As far as I know, again, 99.95% of me wants to say I'm purely a raw guy. But as I'm sure you know, in this business and in this industry, you never really quite know. Really, he's kind of saying WWE isn't really a details. <laughs> WWE isn't a details kind of situation. Now, obviously, there's a chance, and I wouldn't be surprised if this, that Big E appears on SmackDown on Friday. And it's a case of, I'm going to Raw, but farewell. This is my farewell SmackDown appearance. And then maybe you could tease a confrontation between Roman Reigns and Big E you know, lay the seeds for something in Survivor Series in November. That's a real possibility. But I would assume, I would assume that he is, he's a raw guy. Now, in that same interview, this is really interesting. He confirmed that his Money in the Bank cash-in was a last-minute decision. <laughs> no, no, you know the rest. He said, quote, When I started this loop, my intention was that I was supposed to be home Monday morning after the last live event on Sunday, and I realized I was going to Raw last minute. That was a bit of a last-minute decision. There was also the option of maybe I go out there and do some teasing and come back later when it's time to actually cash in or go back to SmackDown and cash in there. He's weaving in and out of kayfabe there. He says, quote, I wasn't really sure. It was an afternoon, that day decision, and it all happened very, very quickly. For me, it was definitely not something that was set in stone days and days ahead. Um, that, that's just, and that's that's WWE. And I know he's trying to weave in and out that, oh, it was my decision. I was the one who decided to cash in and all this kind of stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, that's definitely how it works in WWE. Of course it is. Of course it is. No, that, that's, that's not the situation. But look, uh, like everyone else, we're very happy that Big E is the new WWE champion. And uh, it's a very exciting time. Very exciting time for him. And I think everyone, for the outpouring of support that he has received in the pro wrestling industry, it just it goes to show, doesn't it, about how exciting, how exciting it is to finally have him as to reach the, the point that I think everyone thought he could do. And finally, Paige has teased once again the status when it comes to her in-ring future. The former Divas champion continues to fuel rumors and speculation on her possible in-ring future. Paige took to Twitter yesterday and simply tweeted one word, January. Now, this post could be totally unrelated to pro wrestling, of course. Maybe it is. But it comes after Paige ret uh, teased a return to the ring in late August last month. She said, quote, I'm not done yet. Um, she also uh, wrote in the message in a, uh, on her Twitter bio. Now, of course, Paige has been out of action since being forced to retire in 2018 after suffering an injury to her neck at a December 2017 live event. 
Now, it's believed that she is under contract through 2023, but she recently revealed that her deal expires in June 2022. Furthermore, Paige noted in a late August Twitch stream that she's working hard to come back, adding that she won't make it public if a return is happening as she wants it to be a surprise. She also said she won't be returning imminently, but she feels like she's mentally ready now. So I know a lot of people are talking about it, and I think once you see... After what we've seen the last few years, whether it's Edge, Christian, Brian Danielson, all those people that were told at one point, no, you can't come back. Anything's possible at this point. When it comes to Paige, look, whether that happens in WWE or it happens in AEW, anything's a possibility now. Anything's a possibility. And when she says January, she might be teasing Royal Rumble. She might be teasing whatever. But... Who knows? And I'm very excited to see it, and I hope that she comes back. But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all these WWE news stories we've spoken about today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about WWE, AEW, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go to the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. That was quick, wasn't it? Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.